Howdy, howdy, everybody. Howdy, humans. Hope you're all having a good day today. Uh, my day's been good for the most part. I got a, I got that, uh, I got that short out, and at first it wasn't like doing too hot. But then I like, um, I think what caused like the big shift in it was, um, I, I changed the tags up a little bit so that shorts was the first tag and now that short I posted today on the YouTube uh, is currently at uh, 225 views. So that got me pretty happy. I also had a, I also got to talk to a, I also had, got to have a slightly longer than average conversation with a VTuber friend. I don't get to talk to uh, for a long length today and that was good too. It's, it's been nice. It's been nice today. Also been introspective and shit. So that's been a... Uh, so, slow mental health growth as well. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. We got CC. Welcome in, welcome in. I've had a strong feeling you'd be here. <laughs> Call it a hunch. It's not like you were super hyped for this chapter at the end of a... Uh, at the end of stream last week. <laughs> Not like there was foreshadowing. But yeah, I'm excited for today. I've... Well, CC... More than anything, CC's got me hyped up for this chapter. Because I know, I know that this chapter exists. I know nothing of the details. I know literally none of the details whatsoever. I have no idea what I'm in for as far as narrative is concerned. But I know what... Or rather, who is in this i'm excited i mean i'm excited i'm excited to see tiny characters we're going to tiny characters we're going to tiny characters right now tiny characters it, we gotta manifest we gotta manifest small edgeworth turnabout reminiscence beginning let's see what we got hey faraday Young lady who calls herself the second Yatagarasu. Piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Oh, it's gonna be quite goated with the sauce. Y'all see. Y'all also hyped up the first villain of the case. The fir the first villain of the game. And I thought it was bad. <laughs> Yes, right, I did it. I killed the guy. And he came back for two seconds. But it was the great thief Yada Garasu or something. I ask the defendant, what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yada Garasu. The Yada Garasu is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench. Are you saying that I'm the Yatagarasu? Don't you dare deny it. You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy. Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yatagarasu? That's exactly what I'm... Mr. Rell, I think we've heard just about enough out of you. Yana, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You gotta believe me. Okay, that's a good start already. In accordance with the defendant's ac accusation, new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. Gavel. Oh, gee, I wonder who it could be. Not Edgeworth. It's not Edgeworth. Or it is Edgeworth. Never mind. Wait, do we not get to see small Edgeworth? Do we only get to see small Franny? Shit, I gotta change the stream title. I gotta, I gotta change things again. Hold on. Tiny Edgeworth. Not Tiny Edgeworth. Tiny Franny. There. Fixed. <laughs> I fixed it. No, it's only seven years back. I'm sorry. I forgot to... I... <sighs> I must have been thinking of the anime, because I know that scene when he gets in the car, and, you know, Edgeworth is tiny, and so Franny is tiny too. 
Why you think he tiny? I think it's the that anime scene where he gets in the car with Von Karma. Yeah, there's an anime episode. Yeah, that that's what I'm talking about. I think that's what gaslit me into this. It's a good episode. I never watched the anime. I couldn't get I. Ace Attorney just doesn't hit the same when it's a series, I guess. At least when it's trying to represent one of the games, or multiples of the game. I don't know. Didn't do it for me. Personally. Though maybe, though, that episode... I, I, I don't doubt that episode is probably good. The, games, like, uh, anime and stuff, they usually get the big stuff good it's all the not as big stuff that like drags it down you might call the anime only stuff filler but i like filler i don't know what my opinion is on filler honestly and it, i guess it just depends if it's good filler or not such a controversial opinion i know <laughs> i like my filler when it's good filler when it's bad filler i i think the filler is bad <laughs> Who's ready for my next fucking spicy hot take? I got the... I don't have the right sound effects loaded up. Man, I was really I was really fucking lazy. <laughs> Setting up stream today. Jesus Christ. I was really fucking lazy. As long as it's consistent, it's good. Well... Okay, anyways. Who's ready for my next spicy hot take? Here on Rye Bread 2. We cooking... And it ain't anything coming out of my mouth. <laughs> the Star Village in Naruto filler was good, but never comes back. Fuck. I feel like I know that one. Was it in the first series? Because I know... I can remember a lot of, like, the first Naruto filler. It's everything else that's kind of iffy. So it is. My first assignment as a prosecutor will be... Yes, the first series... Is by chance it the one where Hinata does the 64 Palms Guard? Is it that one? Or am I still delusional? That's... F? Different filler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I find it funny that... <laughs> I find it funny and also tragic that Hinata's most powerful move came from a filler episode. <laughs> I can't type. Neither can I, brother. It's a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Edgeworth. Oh boy. Sir. Okay, what voice do I give you, asshole? You're too important for generic old man voice. Mm. You know... He has a very deep voice when he yells out objection. I think it'd be funny for that to come out of him. This is who I was hyping for. Given your opinions on, on Karma a few streams ago, CC, that just makes me worried. Just try to do an impression of me. I've only old you. I, I don't think your voice fits, CC. <laughs> I don't think your voice fits about Karma, knowing your voice. <laughs> uh. It sounds a little too nice. Balderdash, it sounds too nice for it to fit Bon Karma. Mm. Okay. Let me see if I can just get his uh, actual in-game voice. Objection. You know what we can work with this? <laughs> this is kind of funny. Have you read all over all the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. This paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred Von Karma. Fine voice, I guess. <laughs> Look, man, you know his objective. It's, it's a fucking objection. And then a snap. 
I don't think the snaps are audible very well. I'm not snapping really good right now. I blame the humidity. And I couldn't match that anyways. Look said nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career, I am honored and proud. As I watch over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. <laughs> it kind of sounds like the fucking Metal Gear voice. <laughs> Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Metal Gear. <laughs> you know what? We're settling on that now. Uh. Oh, I know he doesn't look like it'd go that low exactly. Yes, sir. Such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance. Be perfect in every way. Okay, where we're we going? Let's look at my organizer. We have a prosecutor's badge, that is it. Okay. Hmm. Yes, be perfect. About that. Pfft. <laughs> <laughs> Have we forgotten all my numerous incidents at this point? <laughs> this is no good. I could drink a whole gallon. I've never heard of water that tastes that good. Maybe I'll give him a minute. <laughs> to plan on gulping an entire reservoir dry. <sighs> Excuse me, madame, but there's something in the matter. Oh, I just thought someone would have brought hors d'oeuvres by now. But, but this is a courthouse. It would be quite atypical to provide hors d'oeuvres here. Are you sure? Someone poured me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here. What the heck does she think a courthouse is for? Don't disappoint adoption, Ned. I will, just to spite adoption, Ned. Aren't these great? Daddy made all of these. Awesome! But didn't you get fired right after you made them? Ah, yeah I did. Spent the same amount of money on this model as the cost to build the real thing. And my boss wasn't very happy with me. <laughs> hey Daddy, didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside of it? <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. Secret mechanism? Maybe installed as payback for getting fired. Would be trouble. Now I'm curious. Uh, but they also disappoint little Franny. Franny's a bitch right now. I'm okay with disappointing her. <laughs> today's, tri today's trial should have ended in just one minute. <laughs> <laughs> because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. Killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor, Burn Faraday, gave the order. Ah, Faraday is such a fool. He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Burn Faraday? Hmm, he's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, I... I mean, nothing. Let's not remember an incident in an elevator. Elevators don't exist. They're a myth, Edgeworth. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. Prosecutors guardian the court. One with no obligation to outside matters. Plus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as Faraday has will not be forgiven. Have no fear, I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor Burn Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of Metal Gear. <laughs> this is a great voice. I'm very glad. I'm very glad. I remembered fucking Metal Gear. <laughs> So you haven't achieved a firm understanding of the case. Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, 
Explain the case to me. You... I want to see if you're really talking, know what you're talking about. Understood. <laughs> you see, there's a flag, and it has five stripes. That means, you know, that means I don't know where I was going with this joke. Hmm. Though, judging by my, um... Fuck, man. What's the, what's the, like, term for, like, the study of flags? I'm pretty sure this is a bad flag by their standards. Just because it has, like, all these fine details in it. Don't quote me on that, though. Vexology, vexology, that's what it was. The victim? Mr. Duff. <laughs> it's him, I've heard of him. <laughs> the victim, Mr. Dead Man. <laughs> Mr. Died Man. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. They were like, yeah, yeah, we got, we, we got, like, Franny, we got Von Karma, we got Edgeworth, we got his past, we got, we got all this cool shit, fine, oh yeah, we still need to name the victim, a, a, a fuck it, man, a fucking died man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dead man with German accent, so would it be dead man? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it was a staff member at the embassy. A defendant in this case, Mr. Mackerel was held for questioning the night of the incident, as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrest for the possession of the murder weapon. Gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, great thief Yata Karasu had successfully infiltrated the Koa Kodobian Embassy as well. At first, Ro claimed that he himself was the Yata Karasu, that he did not kill Dad Man. Wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down while in the spotlight if he is found guilty. There is truly no limit to the people's inanity. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecutor presented the, the security footage that captured the murder. But it clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Sorrell firing the gun could clearly be seen from the visitor's gallery. On seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to, by the real Yadakarasu Burn Faraday! Hmm. hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing! Exclamation point. While this may appear to be simply being the murder of a Kodopian Embassy staff member, People are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident? Very sorry, sir. Your honor, the video uh, footage clearly shows you lost the game. <laughs> no, it hasn't. I don't see a help bar yet. I ain't seen no green. I ain't seen no explosions. We ain't there yet. I'm gonna fail at presenting evidence later. <laughs> Welcome in, Cringe Ninja. Hope you're having a good day today. Hmm. The second KG-8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I feel I failed to study hard enough. Hmm. Well, even among the police, it's information that only slick few are privy to. Would you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you first must learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. You've heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? <laughs> there he is! Circuit's favorite character! Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested. Under suspicion of smuggling. Correct! CCU was an employee of the Amano Group, and the sole witness to smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime to light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a Kadopian embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a Kadopian by the name of Manny Cochin was a suspect. 
However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. CC, me, a smuggler, it's more likely than you think. <laughs> oh, I feel stupid for not realizing that. I got slow streamer brain. Got slow streamer brain today. I did chug an energy drink before stream too, so that's unfortunate. Only one though. I'm not repeating Harvestella from yesterday. Lack of evidence. Ha! <laughs> I was the only, if only I was in charge of the case. I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. <laughs> to make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Exclamation point. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well. That's right. Now, once again, victim of the case you are currently assigned to. Someone who was scheduled to testify against a smuggling organization. Just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just the day before his day in court against a smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way they did in the KG-8 incident. So that is why it is being called the second KG-8 incident. Yes. Yet there is still one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? So-called noble thief that is sending everyone to an uproar. The great thief. Liquid Ocelot. <laughs> I mean Yatagarasu. <laughs> Yatagarasu? I'd better find out more. Is it true that the Yatagarasu showed up at the Kadopian Embassy? What could he or she me have been after? Hmm. No doubt stealing suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely, steal secrets from the Kadopian Embassy itself. Since the item that the Yatagrasu stole from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yatagrasu sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to Radagrasu is getting top secret treatment. Sounds like I'll need to infiltrate Ganamosa again. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proof positive that the Yatagrasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? Manfred being helpful. Uh, right now. <laughs> he certainly isn't wasn't helpful in the past or the future. <laughs> He's losing two out of three, CC. <laughs> It would have to have been the first time the Yatagarasu had left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yatagarasu, I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yatagarasu case as well. The prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yatagarasu case. Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. There she is! Tiny K! He helped bring himself down by giving Yanni Yogi the opportunity for revenge. Cece, I don't think that was intentional. I don't think he meant for that. Just a thought. You're scary, mister. Do you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. This is full of dimes, quarters, and pennies, but it looks like you've exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? She's so fucking cute! Oh my god, I want to ruffle her hair. <laughs> I want to pinch her cheeks. I want to pick her up and carry her on my shoulders. All of my fu all of my paternal instincts are coming in right now. <laughs> Kay's adoption grandfather. Would that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child to be like that running around inside the Shadow Moses Island. Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? Paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. 
Why you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? Uh, I I'm so sorry. I can have you mopping up the courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. It's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hmm. <laughs> a proud one you are. You'd better collect the evidence from Faraday and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. Time to go stop Metal Gear. That, should I switch the title now to Tiny K? <laughs> Time for his debut. I like that in spite of all the investigation and shit, we actually get to be on the prosecutor's bench. I think that's really cool. <laughs> Switch it to Tiny K. Alright, switching to Tiny K. <laughs> there we go. Title switch to Tiny K. <laughs> uh, with Manfred as your consultant. See, see, I don't feel like breaking the law today. So what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet, either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh. <sighs> hmm. Oh, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson... <laughs> Younger Jugs looks the same. His investigation spray is so good, though. It is! Just... God, Ace Attorney Sprite Worker is just so fucking good, and I'm... I'm kind of sad... That it's 3D now. Sprite work is a dying art in AAA industries. Yes, it will be all impossible to prove the witness a liar. Without the evidence from Faraday. What is that blessed buffoon up to? Probably got shot. It's an emergency, sis! There he is! So silence! There should be no yelling in the sacred hall of law. Unless it's me. <laughs> I get to yell all I want. Bailiff, remove that man from this courtroom at once. But please, wait. You have to listen to me. There's an emergency. The vet in lobby number two, M Mr. Faraday and the defendant. The two of them, they're, they're both dead, your honor. Whoa. What? Whoa. What? Well, so much for being a prosecutor. Stay back. No one's allowed on the crime scene. Period. So who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? Hey, you! No run in the hallway, pal! Who are you to tell me what to do? Never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. Running away! <laughs> Hold on, I actually gotta look over here. Poster to judge, there's a slogan of some sort on it. That's a. <laughs> this is a promotional poster for the court or hair growth product. <laughs> I just find it hilarious that they advertise the judge in the court. <laughs> uh, uh, his actual first case was with Mia, remember? Brother, it's been a while. It's been a long while, okay? <laughs> uh. Hey. 
All right, back to it. Hmm, a drink vending machine. Now it's not the time to be pondering what kind of drink I want. Terry Falls was forgotten. Brother, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think I remember the name of a, like a single victim that was not like already a major character. Nims seems sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. Okay. Dahlia Hawthorne. Like I said, any that wasn't an already major character. <laughs> Even then, was Dahlia really a victim? Like, she kind of just got, like, executed. Because she, you know... You know, I need to shut up. Because Circuit might watch these VODs. <laughs> that was the witness in his first case. Well, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that now. Hmm. Yeah, no, I need to shut up. Because Circuit might watch these. I don't want to spoil uh, Trials and Tribulations for him. Alright. Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? Well, have you known, madam, that I stunned under Manfred von Kahn? Do not take me for some naive novice. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> So you're a student of Von Karma! I should have. <laughs> Clothes are a dead giveaway! Stop right there! These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts! Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks for the great laugh. But try not to make me like me them. Try not to make me laugh so much, okay? Her theme is one of my favorites. Yeah, this is jazzy, I like it. Uh, I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callisto Yu. If you're telling the truth, we were about to go head to head in court. Ah, but of course. I have heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> ah, but of course. I have heard much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. <laughs> the person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Laughing Queen, I love her already. I can't wait for her to be the murderer. Just a prediction. I don't actually know. She had the same stress response as me. Aw, <laughs> oh, CC. <laughs> and you all? Get a good sip. Who? Me? Hey, pal. It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. Ugh, point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a district prosecutor. Prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as long as you, pal. I told you my name, now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe, and only just recently, I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream, it's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. 
this detective is entirely too excited to be in a murder scene. <laughs> so, Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you knew about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defend lobby number two. Hmm. So you were the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Look at this gumshoe, so young and full of dreams. How old is he right now? I forgot his age. He's a Yadagarasu. Look at tiny little Kate! I love her. 26 years old. Good lord, Gumshoe is a year older than me right now. I don't know how to feel about that. And Karma. Uh, Karma being 60. Faraday is 40 years old. God damn. Get ready for the Gumshoe cosplay. Bro, I don't got the build for Gumshoe. I'm too skinny for that. I, I, my, my, my twink-like body is too small for that. <laughs> Do I cut your pay? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, good. <laughs> Just like, or you cut your pay. What, y'all unsubscribe and now you're subjected to ads again? <laughs> you want to be bombarded with Cox Internet? CC? You want to be bombarded with Mayo commercials? You still have your Founder's Badge, is the thing. But yeah. <laughs> Gumshoe is my cosplay. Hey man, you rock it. You could, you could rock Gumshoe, actually. You actually could rock Gumshoe. I ain't a Maggie Bird, give it time. Hmm. I believe in you. Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot, and then I kind of froze. You're a detective, and a measly gunshot scared you that much. And again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like to hear one at close range. Then Detective Bad came up. Bad came running to the scene. We went to lobby number two together, and both men were lying there, dead. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't have a single peep. Hear a single peep of a struggle. Well, hey, Gumshoe was over thirty when he met her. Hmm, true. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Alright, that's it for him. Alright, Detective Bad. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Tyrell Bad. Homicide. Was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here. I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. Kid? I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist you update me on the situation. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? Is he going for his gun? It, it, it's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? You know, I know Japan of Thepornia has bad laws, but he could technically get arrested for that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that counts as like... I'm not sure if it's brandishing, but it's something. Under a detective, I like his design a lot. It's edgy, but it's like a tasteful edgy. A grizzled kind of edgy. I like grizzled edgy. <laughs> hmm. Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, a Mr. Mac Rail, shot killed. He was found holding a blood knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went in the defendant lobby number two? 
Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy really is testing my patience. I like his theme too, dude. There's a lot of bangers in this chapter already. Okay, I'm done. Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides are my only gig. Yadagarasu case is also one of my assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon to comment on the Yatagarasu's characteristics. In order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yatagarasu. Well, well, looks like you just might have a brain after all in that head of your son. It's a son? I'm not your son, Pops! I fucking love Edgeworth saying that line. Miss you! There's someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? Kodobi, an embassy, sta uh, embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin. What? What's going on? Detective Bat and Miss Yu's moods just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Wasn't Manny Cochin? I'll be right there. Hmm. It's nice to see you again. Man, alright, I'm trying to... There's a specific voice I'm gonna get. It's nice to see you again, Miss You. Why... Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. Nah, nah. Actually. Would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine. Let's go. Little Gear. Bad. On karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. Usually do when Yana Grasu is involved. I see his case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes, he's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of crime. Only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. Hmm. It's not like I don't know that. Moving on, though, bad. The man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? That Faraday. I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile. I will prove his guilt in three minutes. On karma, I think you said enough for that. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. Hmm. Very well. Back on topic. I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Oh! Tiny Franny! <laughs> Hold on, we need, to we need to change the stream title again. Hold on. We have to change it. We have to change it again. Hold on. This is important. We we need to keep changing it <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> mm. All right. I'm honestly this guy keeper with the Frieza voice. Mm. Um, fucking Papa, how can you place him in charge? Francisco, what are you doing? Here? I'm here for summer vacation. What else? <laughs> Siska von Karma, so she is here on vacation from Germany. She's a daughter of Manfred von Karma and is a student of his, who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget it. <laughs> I can totally read your thoughts, Edward. <laughs> You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? Huh? If you were able to pass, then I'll have... If you were able to pass, then I'll have absolutely no trouble at all. <laughs> I don't need training. I'm a prodigy. <laughs> Super Saiyans don't exist. Huh. I'll never allow myself to lose to you. Never. Hmm. Why does she always have to be this competitive? 
Anyway, father, are you really assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover the case? Yes, I am. What do you ask? Well, you know, I'm close to becoming prosecutor myself. And I am 100% confident I can do a better job than him. Just like Franziska. There's no problem badmouthing someone right in front of her. I think she's 15 if I remember her lore right. <laughs> Francisca age lore. Yeah. Ah. Uh, these two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both these kids loose on the crime scene? Ha! Huh. This is the perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. Crimes. Hmm. Huh. The crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, Dad. And I will not tolerate complaining. Eh. Edgeworth. Francisco. I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the Merkin Fjord. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, Mon Karma. I still haven't agreed to this yet. She's so tiny. Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisco. This will be the perfect chance for us to see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Kama name. We kill you to at least say hello. <clears throat> Long time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can act all proud. She, she hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth. As I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Von Kama name. She clearly didn't get the sleeves till she passed the bar exam. <laughs> nah, bro, it's just summer. It's human. <laughs> uh, they, no, no, no. They just, like, ran out of prosecutor badges. <laughs> they just ran out of prosecutor badges that day, and they were just like, you know, put some sleeves on. <laughs> Here. <laughs> just had, like, it's not even a new, like, shirt or anything. Like, it's just the sleeves. Literally just the sleeves. They're just gloves. They're, like, removable. <laughs> Crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. Looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. Just like him, he never fails. Now, I'd appreciate it if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. Two guys lying on top of each other? Hmm. Ah, no. They got socks on, right? Hmm. I dropped something. Hold on! God damn it! <laughs> I don't know where I dropped that thing either. What the hell am I supposed to fidget with now? <laughs> it's the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously. Miles and Edgeworth, you should listen to someone until they are finished talking. Um, what are you talking about? I'll only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Competition. The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm. So the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name. Exactly. I don't care that you became prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things coming out of your foolishly foolish mouth. Hmm. Fine. Whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Ha! Well, let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am. Beginning to discover the truth behind a crime, how delightfully childish. Alright. 
You kids over there. Hold it. Kid? Ha! Seps you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. H how dare you call me a kid as well? I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a reckless on my crime scene. Hey, big guy. You're going to watch over these two. Yes, sir, Detective Bad, sir. Now, what do I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scruffy. You'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. It ain't then you, prosecutor boy. Let's get your investigation started already, all right? Great, now even that detective is treating me like a child. All right, time to get investigating. Get a move on, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth. If you were to call me Prosecutor Boy one more time, it'll be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. Oh shit, backstory. What would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. So naive. Alrighty. Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? God. What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. It leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire these weapons? <laughs> the gun was inside a Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in a trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kadopian Embassy staff member. But... I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rell was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. It means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. If there had been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented, then why does the Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if? Possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutorial evidence. He could have then brought it out and attacked Mr. Rell with it. Huh. Maybe you got a brain in there after all, kid. Nah. Is he going to treat me like a child forever? Looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Rell first, who they encounter attack. That's the only logical conclusion you could draw from a scene like this. Hmm, not yet. I feel it's too much too early to be drawing conclusions already. Let's first find conclusive evidence as to ensure the honor of the Von Karma name. Okay, now I can save. Okie dokie. Go ahead, take care of these things real quick. Go back. Soon as we go back, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick little ad break. This is gonna be the perfect time for y'all to go ahead and get some water, get some snacks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to. And as soon as we come back, we'll be doing our investigation the same as always. So with all that being said,
Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back. Hope y'all had a good break. Huh. Hope y'all got done what you need to get done. What I'm going to get done is looking at two men lying over each other. A very straight thing to do. Mm. It's like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. First glance, it seems they must have killed each other. However, using logic, the only logical conclusion is... Aha! But what was that outburst for? My detective's instinct just hit me real hard. It was first... It was Mr. Rell that fell first, see? You don't need a detective instinct for that. It's common sense. I suppose we won't know much more than that till after I examine the bodies. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Alright. Done. Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand. We shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun. I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? Exactly rocket science, even I know how to pull a trigger. Though I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. But sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. Here's that the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hand. Alrighty. We got the gun, let's look at Faraday himself. Mr. Faraday, how ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why'd it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. Can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal. Other than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. And you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Get back to work. Find out the cause of his murder. R right I'm on it, pal. What's up with this blood? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. Know that much, detective. Sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Only I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy. Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? Hello, D and D. D and D finale session got pushed back again to Monday. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to hear, but I'm also glad you're here, Circuit. Welcome in. Uh, uh, I hope the rest of your day has been good so far. Otherwise, I know. I, honestly, I just relate to D and D getting pushed back a lot. <laughs> so that's kind of why I chuckle a little at that. But outside of that, I hope you're doing good. The rest of my day has mostly been slow, to be honest. For the most part, same. Though I did get some stuff done. <laughs> right now, we're looking at two men on top of each other. It's okay, they have socks on. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. <laughs> I'm glad we're on top of things with the redeems today. Looks like Mr. Red died with a knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. And he must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot some notes down about it. Why the squares? Those are plastic bags that were meant for holding evidence. That's what they are. First, he killed a Cadopian Embassy staff member, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh? What makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Dead Man. <laughs> oh yeah, Circuit, what do you think of that victim name? Circuit, what do you think of that victim name? <laughs> I need to see his response. That's... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Deed man. <laughs> Honestly, a very expected name for Ace Attorney. Exactly! Hey, good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition? Yep, do you know about it? It's a special feeling that all detect- We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. Aw, oh, man. I don't think there's much else for me to investigate. What's my logic look like? Ugh. Hmm. Alright, let's look at my evidence. There it is, evidence for an embassy staff killing case was found in his hand. Faraday brought this as evidence it was found in Rel's hand. Alright, let's talk to some more people. Actually, let's look over here. There's some plastic bags stacked up on the table. It's a tea set, too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, that table's all neat and tidy. Maybe. They were super quiet in the scuffle. After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. With the plastic bags scattered on the floor, throwing us off. This chair's tea set. <laughs> eh, maybe. This, oh, nope. Alright, it's the same thing. What about this bag? Can I examine the bag? There's some stuff. There's some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. Probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect from. Th this is the evidence? Ah, I better not touch it. I'll leave prints on it. You just not pay attention to anything you do. This window is suspicious. Window is open and... <laughs> there's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ah, flowers in the gun down there are so gross and ghastly. Do you think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? At least there's no way someone escaped through this window, pal. It wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact? There are also iron bars on the window. Yeah, I guess it's that too. Either way, no one could get through those windows, right? Thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. All right, we need to talk to Franny. Cause Circa needs to see Tiny Franny. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can only show you Tiny K through uh, this picture. She's adorable! Look at her! Anyways. <laughs> ah, I see. Did you figure something out? This is a competition, Miles. And as such, I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. Hmm. Young Francisco looks fucking weird. <laughs> <sighs> as you wish. <laughs> is it because she has half sleeves? Is that why? Wow! Whoa! What is it, Detective Gumshoe? Because of her hair? Yeah, I could understand that. When somebody's- when you're used to, like, one hairstyle and somebody switches, it's like you're looking at a completely different person. My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Perhaps you should purchase an more normal-sized television like this one. Oh, let me see- Wow, this thing is huge! Ah! And way too noisy! You're the noisy one, Scruffy! Don't touch it. You'll get your fingerprints all over. But, but, I didn't touch it. Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. Foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to show up on. The TV has been left on. Why are you looking at me like that? It wasn't me. I didn't touch anything. Gumshoe, you do know what will happen if you touch something again. Right? I, I won't touch anything. I won't even go anywhere near the TV, sir. And you, get back to your investigation, all right? I was planning to do so anyway. Detective Bad, do you have any thoughts on this case? 
Faraday and Rail. They look like they killed each other to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. Hmm. What would that be? Hmm. Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? What? Now I've been downgraded to just boy! Okay. So that's all we got, then. Unless the plant is important, but I doubt it. I'll check the plant, just to be safe. I think after this, all we can do is just logic. The two things we have. Plant. Give me the plant. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around. Hmm. Perhaps I should purchase one for my room. That's it. <laughs> Edgeworth plant lore. Alright. We had three. There's a very tiny pile of plastic bags on the table. And a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. Not likely that the ones on the floor were or knocked over during the struggle. In which case, might there be another explanation as to how they got there? Um, another reason? I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of this bag is related to Eh, please get that blood away from me, pal! Detective Gumshu, whose blood is on this bag? Um, hold on, let me ask the lab guy. Alright, please hurry. Dot dot dot. Wait till you get a load of this, pal, it's Mr. Faraday's! Oh, and the technician said he didn't find anything else on or in the bag, sir. Hmm. It appears that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I'll leave it in your hands, pal. Now what? <laughs> well... Can I deduce yet? No, I cannot deduce it. Eggs strewn on the floor of lobby two. It has Faraday's blood on it. This blood here is from Mr. Faraday, but there are no other clues to be found. Which begs the question: Do I need to put this bag inside another bag in order to preserve it as evidence? <laughs> bag of blood inside of a bag of blood inside of a bag of blood. So we're out of logic. We can't deduce. Talk to bad? There's no other logic, right? Yeah, just the window. Do I investigate the chair? No. Gum shoe, we've not had to talk to the partner. It's never been a requirement to talk to the partner yet, though. Alright, there's one thing I think I can look at. Never mind. There's something. His hand is all black down here. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Bro, I couldn't even see that down there. I don't think. This blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. Ah, an ink stain? Yes, I usually get the ink on my own hand when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. 
You sure you ain't just making it up, pal? Sorel's cause of death was from being shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Um, are you sure they were trying to hide something? And confirm that Sorel's cause of death with his body positioned like that. Detective Bad, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail than possible. What's this? I'm not able to form a theory with them as the way they are. Leave an examination on the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? An OG Splatoon fan? <laughs> but there's no black ink in uh, OG Splatoon. Hmm, I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Blabby. Yes, sir, we've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. There you have it. There was back when it was modded. D do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies for me, will you? Uh, okay, please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Film shoot. Do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Along with white ink. <laughs> they kind of like, uh... They like half did it. Uh, the white ink when they did the, uh... Ketchup versus Mayo Splatfest. It was a bit more of a yellow color. But that was them kind of like doing red and... <laughs> red and white ink without actually doing red and white ink. It was funny. Ah. I want to rest until I've suspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Let's look at this pen. Something in his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. Hey, you know I always keep a pencil behind my ear. Because Detective Bat is always telling me, she always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you don't strike me as, you strike me as quite a forgetful individual. Thought I was stabbing him. There's a knife wound in his chest, you see? I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Well is holding. There be. Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. Make it quick. The look of things. I could to do so. The knife Mr. Well is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. Mr. Faraday is holding a gun in his right hand. That's the one Mr. Relly you got blown away by, right? Blabby, your answer. Yes, sir. We found that the ballistic markings do match that gun. Oh, um, the ballistic markings are, um, are the figurative fingerprints of a gun that fires when it leaves the bullet. I read that correctly. I promise. <laughs> don't, don't go back to that. <laughs> don't analyze my grammar, please. I failed English. That's a lie. <laughs> I was actually good in English. <laughs> Just not in my daily life. Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, of course I already knew about all that, pal. Maybe you'd better be going off back to the academy. Eat, come on, sir. Cut me some slack, will ya? So, the bullet that was fired from this gun is what felled Mr. Rell. The Fell Rell, if you'll put it like that. Mr. Faraday. Okay, uh, we've already read this one. Ugh. Shot in the chest. Take some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must mean... Wait, burn marks? The round grows very hot as is a discharge from a fire. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when a shot is fired from point-blank range. There go, Mr. Realm must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for age, pal. And this detective has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Minor spelling error! Minor spelling error! Minor spelling error! 
<laughs> There's a minor smelling air check, quick. Make fun of him. <laughs> Make fun of him real quick. <laughs> Make fun of him, chat. <laughs> Make fun of him! <laughs> Minor spelling error! <laughs> Look at it! <laughs> the miracle didn't happen for the translation team, that's for sure. <laughs> uh. Alright. Let's fix that. There we go. <laughs> uh. This man fish react him. <laughs> this man fish reach him. <laughs> oh shit, another spot. Guys, guys, another another minor spelling error. <laughs> shit, hold on. My OBS is cooperating there. Minor spelling error, chat. <laughs> we got two. We got two for one special. <laughs> oh no, you can't escape. You can't escape. Get the fuck back here. <laughs> Everyone can see it. CC, clip this. That's an order. <laughs> Get back here. You can't run. Okay, maybe you can run. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, that was fun. All right, let me fucking. There we go. <sighs> now let us try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday made a minor spelling mistake. Then, the and the knife out from today's trials, and he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two men fell together where they stood. That's my theory in any case. What a crazy way to go! Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. Alright, I guess that's it for there. Ah, I see. Okay, so we literally- I literally just cannot talk to either of them. Got it. Actually, I wish to save. I wish to sab. <laughs> Fucking my- I- the fact that you made your own spelling mistake immediately afterwards <laughs> was just perfect. Uh, I hope it was I I hope it was unintentional. <laughs> English heart. <laughs> no, no, no. Get the fuck back. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck back here! <laughs> oh. You put me in feral, is it because I'm going feral on his grammar? <laughs> oh my god. I love you guys. I just want that said that I genuinely love you guys. Y'all keep me from going into a depressive spiral over the week over my days off. Oh god. Oh, that was funny. If it happens a fourth time, then I know that Circuit's doing it intentionally. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I never! 
Okay, fucking... Bam. Bam. This also confirms that he's left-handed. Splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from this fountain pen. Ooh, let's ask the lab guy. Punctuation error? Alright, oh, those don't count on the internet. <laughs> those don't count. Nobody uses fucking punctuation. Capitalization, either. I see. Good work. Ah. No, I've always wanted to say that. You mean it was just one time in my life. Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand. It's fair to assume that he was left-handed. Here's that Mr. Faraday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. <laughs> I do know of someone who does. He writes all proper, including the period at the end. Now you see, that's just psychopathic behavior. Keep an eye on that one. He could be, he could be up to anything. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. <laughs> There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal, really? I suppose I'll just have to show you the conflict in this crime scene. I know exactly what it is. Yarika! <laughs> hmm. We need to improve our texting to be graded better. <laughs> uh, now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of. It is this! Mr. Faraday used his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left handed. And yet, the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That, lady and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting the skies. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? Backs that up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags scattered on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Bada bing, bada boom, what the fuck you gonna do? Here's the autopsy report. It's probable that Mr. Rell survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from a stabbing. Interesting. Ugh. <sighs> Hmm. Looks like we knew everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course! The incident began with Mr. Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage for being accused and tried to kill the defendant. The defendant fought back, and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There's absolutely no margin for doubt. We really believe that to be the truth. How is Faraday on top, clearly laying there by another? I've been thinking about that since the start. I've been thinking about that since the start. In addition, where's the... Yeah. Because if what, like, we would have seen a bullet in the floor... Or, like, somewhere. Oh, we don't even see an exit. Well, we haven't seen an exit mode because we haven't flipped them over. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Like, if I was, like, charging at someone, stabbing them, and they shot me, only in really extraneous circumstances would I not be on top. How big is this, is this goddamn tube? How small is a yard?
I ro okay, uh, I don't know what you mean by goddamn two circuit. <laughs> this goddamn room. You're just doing it on purpose at this point. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, Circuit. <laughs> Sir. Uh, I am multilingual. <laughs> I get a pass. <laughs> but we gotta continue the bit. <laughs> It's for content, Circuit. It's for content. If it's for content, everything is okay. <laughs> content D's. <laughs> that one doesn't even work. <laughs> that's a, like, that's not even a good D's nuts joke. That's just saying, like, that's literally just being like, oh, stream these. Um, okay, stream these nuts work. This is like going a, a fucking phone these nuts. Fucking um, amiibo these nuts. Controller these nuts. That's, that's what that is. <laughs> Come on, Circuit. You're better than this. Why do I even have you as a mod if you can't even roast me properly? <laughs> Uh, ha! Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? Man said these nuts. <laughs> and you don't want to believe it's true. <laughs> it's alright. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there's any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Merrill. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In case, I should first look for any holes in a theory. Okay, so I'm gonna be real, I wasn't even reading, I was just focusing on the voicing. <laughs> Alright, Faraday's death was instantaneous, but Rel survived for a short time. And this is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rel. Mr. Rel, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him stabbed him. I'm gonna go... Tr I'm gonna try and go straight for the kill. We'll see if it works. There's one, like, little mini challenge I do whenever I play Ace Attorney, is I try to see if I can... Like... If I can get to the point with the fewest moves... I know how I have my own fawn. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh. Ah. Hmm. To believe that the dying from Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Faraday. Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. In the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Hmm. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. Well, I'm still getting there with the least amount of moves. <laughs> Good thing you pressed, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Marks about the bodies. Faraday died of a knife stab to the chest, a shock. I had a bullet rune. There was no gunpowder. It burned his clothes. 
Wait, shit, go back. Now, there's so many crime scene notes. Never mind. Keep having to look behind my phone. There we go. Two men were fighting. The struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. Have a Detective Gumshoe testify that he heard absolutely nothing. Ha! Ah, you place too much faith in that detective's testimony, no? But for the sake of argument, let's say there was a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. Not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. L took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. Then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. L after being stabbed? Hmm. Isn't there something strange in Francisca's statement just now? I wish I could look back at it. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. L after being stabbed. Oh, yeah. Durr. Take that. I was thinking about that. I was like, okay, is that what they want me to do? Or According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not have possibly fired the gun after that. Ooh, you got me. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. We suppose that Mr. Rell attacked first, and Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have been stabbed. Mr. Faraday, after he was shot, then they both died. That's the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francisco. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible, before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hm. I will naive of you to believe that your opinions are valid, and still expect to, to discover the truth at the crime scene office. Francisco, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly. The fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here in the crime scene is... Okay. Yeah! Just making sure it ends up in my head first. Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. On being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot, and Mr. Rell died thereafter. That's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the bodies are hard. No! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's, therefore... Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday. I impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene that we must solve is... No, not so fast, Miles Edgeworth. What now? I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. You'll bounce back quickly. Explanation won't be enough this time. I'm going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. Two bodies fell into a pile, which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. Hmm. Just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. As I do, I can then present her with evidence that proves the contradiction. Hmm. 
All right. So how it goes right now. Faraday attacks Rep. And then Rel gets shot, charges, stabs him, he dies instantly. That can't go any other way, simply just due to the fact that Faraday dies instantly. That's the facts of the autopsy right now. Two bodies fell into a pile. Pressing on that. They attacked each other at the same time. I assume Mr. Faraday had two different weapons in his hands. He made to attack Mr. Rell while holding both the knife and the revolver. And then, after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rell grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That doesn't make that. I figured that's what she was going for, honestly. Close range is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... And if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got! Oh, I will. To that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. <laughs> I don't see any point to that, but as you please. Act each other at the same time from close range. I'm liking this case so far. So you believe they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. Two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. With there being no chance of Mr. Rell to move that far after being shot. There is only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of foolish thought from a thoroughly foolish fool! I'm not right. Then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent. That would be. You in this room. Contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was a third person here. It was that third person that killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. Set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. Third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in this crime? Of course. If the third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. If that this has all been a setup made to look like they killed each other. Present it. Lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that that's not yet in place. This is a piece of evidence that proves there is a third person involved. This is all I've got. Prosecutor's badge, no. I honestly think it's this. Never mind. Hm. There is no need for an explanation. Um, well, I have no idea how it's related, so could you please explain it to me? Yes, well, um... Let me guess, you can't explain it, can you? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
It would appear I was wrong. There is definitely a contradiction here. It should resolve itself if there truly was a third person here. I should go over the evidence and my thoughts come again. Alright, let's think about this a bit better. Discovered immediately after gunshot was heard. Remarks about the bodies. Faraday died of a knife stabbed to the chest. A shock for the stabbing causing the teen's death. Rel died of a bullet wound in the chest. There's no gunpowder guns, suggesting he was shot from a few yards away. It's possible he was alive for a while after being shot. Discovered immediately after a gunshot was heard. I don't want to incriminate Gumshoe! I don't want to! I don't want to incriminate Gumshoe! Don't make me do it! Take that. Okay, thank god. Bag or pen, I bet. I mean, how would the pen imply it? Found pen used by the left-handed Faraday. Looks like it has a quality name. I mean, also true. I don't think the bag contributes. Or maybe it does. Take that. It's not the pen. <laughs> we are losing so much. At that point, it's gotta be the bag. Take that! Done in Mr. Faraday's hand, in the plastic bag with his blood. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Call Detective Gumshoe's testament. It was in the hallway the whole time, but I ain't hear a single peep of a struggle. It wasn't a struggle in this room. There shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. And yet someone else scat must have deliberately scattered them around. I'll say I should have gone with that. I feel like I was thinking too far ahead. Oh yeah, because the guy who died instantly is inside. Yep. <laughs> the blood... Oh yeah, because the blood of the guy who died instantly is inside. I, 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 I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I'm not even making a joke anymore. Blood of the guy. It's regarding the gun for a moment. It's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. Wolpert held a knife with a plastic bag around it. He used the bag to catch any blood splatter when they withdrew the knife. And by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one with them, arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, able to conceal their presence. Ah! Looks like we've still got a long way to go in the investigation. Yes. That's what you sound like? <laughs> well, what the heck's up with you, pal? Mr. Bad, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? Well, what? What's the meaning of this? Ha, huh, looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. 
don't you dare. That detective claims that he was standing, that he was there, standing in front of the door the entire time. I have on good authority that it was all a giant lie. So you, I ask that you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad? So I ask you, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you... Did you kill Faraday? N no Of course not, sir! It would appear that this one who set up this crime scene up was the detective, which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. Looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Miles. <laughs> I was in the hallway the whole time, but I ain't hear a single peep of a struggle. Is that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now suspect in the murder of two men. Spout the truth or so help me. I I haven't lied to anyone, sir. Honest. I really was there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bat, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Affection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma after. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. What's that? What should I ask Detective Gumshoe about? Hmm. So, I'm gonna save real quick. Bleh. My neck a little bit of a massage. There we go. It continue. Get us back to the save point. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to a quick lab break. So it's gonna be a perfect opportunity for y'all to go ahead, get some water, get some snacks, get some drinks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to do. And as soon as we're back, we'll ask Detective Gumshoe questions and Hopefully make him not a suspect, because I don't want Gumshoe to be a suspect. But with all that being said, bye for now.
Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back. Hope y'all had a good break. Hope y'all got done whatever you need to get done. Let's go ahead and jump back into things, shall we? Uh, why wasn't he in the hallway? Detective Gumshoe, why were you missing from the hallway for a span of time? Look, pal, like I said, I was there the whole time, okay? There was a testimony against you that... Miles Edgeworth, why are you wasting our time with a completely useless question? Hmm? The only logical reason as to why he was absent in that time is he was busy committing the crime. Anyone who says otherwise is a fool. Ugh. Maybe I should ask about something else. Detective Gumshoe. Take it that no one else was in that hallway at any time, correct? Huh? Uh, oh, of course not, pal. You're being awfully defensive. Might you be hiding something from me? Watch your mouth, pal. You can't go around saying stuff like that about me without any evidence. Hmm. I suppose you're right. I have no evidence at this point. Miles Edgeworth, how could you be losing a battle of wits with this detective? You're a disgrace. <sighs> I suppose the one thing I'd like to clarify is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing his crime. Hmm. Motive, huh? Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? No, sir, not me. Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir. That effect. I hate your objection clip so much, and I hope to God you are the murderer. So I can throw you in the slammer, and I never have to fear that choppy, compressed to hell voice clip ever again in my fucking life. You are a disgrace to the quality of Ace Attorney voice acting on the Nintendo DS. I'm not even saying your voice actor is bad. That compression is just so fucking bad! Anyways. I'm telling you, I am not lying! One natural you act, the more suspicious you become. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Would you please share it with us? However, be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to flights of fancy. Because all I'm interested in is a perfect explanation. <laughs> you serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me. So I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit! A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for a perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Hmm. Oh shit, uh... Decode the punk. Trying to remember... Where I know you from. Been falling for a bit, though, but welcome back. Hope you're doing all right. Ugh. Hmm. I know for bit. Oh, okay. Now I remember. Yeah, like now I re specifically remember you. I remember exactly when you showed up. Now. <laughs> Hope you're doing all right. We're just playing Ace Attorney at the moment. <laughs> I always feel bad when people be like, "Yo, Rye, what's up, buddy?" And then like I I'm just kind of sitting here like. Please remind me who you are again. <laughs> I don't mean to be an asshole, I promise. I'm just horrible at remembering everything. Though I did recognize the uh, the name Decode, though. Mm. Uh, love Ace Attorney. We all love Ace Attorney here. CC loves Ace Attorney. We've gotten circuit into uh, Ace Attorney streamer, a streamer dementia. My brother in Christ. I got 154 people that are following me right now, and I haven't even seen most of them in chat. Okay, don't you tell me about streamer dimension. You bitch. I can cut your salary next. How would that feel? 
Hmm. I live for those moments I make up a shit story and go through events that never happen. Sometimes they believe it. Uh, I can see you've been following. My man has gumshoe memory. I will switch to Harvestella for the sole purpose of setting you on fire. Is that what we want? Why are you helping him? Why would you do this? God damn it, CC. Okay, fine. We'll go back. Yeah. No harvest is still only lawyers. Why? We can't truth anything you say. So, uh, hmm, there's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there are some gaps I know the logic that I may be very filled in. <laughs> Misused perfect explanation may not be so perfect like that for the all. <laughs> uh, this redeems create all visual novels. Okay, hey, um, it, it was the battery. You know, I, I thought they'd check their team. So they just prepared Oh no, it's happening again. It's it's a two 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 they all over again. Oh no! I sound so overwhelmingly stupid on top of everything. Also, my microphone battery is starting to go dead, apparently. So I need to take care of that. Okay, I need to turn this back on just for a second. Because I never fix uh, the volume on this one. There we go. Okay. Huh. I can't wait for the day to get raided and we use Discombobulate. God, you're gonna have to wait for the trailer first. You're gonna have to wait for me to play that first. Because we can play a trailer in response to a raid now. So you gotta have timing. Hmm. Hello. You are... In hell. <laughs> I'm a simple creature. I am pleased by simple things. No, 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 you bitch! You absolute bitch! You whore! You fucking whore! Heh <laughs> I don't care if it's a bad idea, it's funny. Yeah! Ah! Oh my god, that actually scared the shit out of me! Heh <laughs> I pause to read chat. That would be a bad thing. How high should I? Ah! I've played this game for years, and I've never seen this I've never played stupid. Sell the game exclusively at fucking Walmart. Okay. Are we back? Are we back? Are we good? Are we Gucci? Also, I just realized that this is not correct. There we go. All right, that's fixed. Yay! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Wonderful timing, CC. Thank you. Perfect timing. <laughs> okay, let's hear more about this fucking incident. Alrighty. Ugh. Brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. Alright. Or actually, we'll do this one. That is the wrong button. Mr. Faraday was upset. Yeah, you know what else? Mr. Faraday is exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> but there he was, totally beat red in the face. <laughs> and the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, like he was about to die. Just like the face he's making right now. 
Ah, I'm completely innocent, I tell ya. Oh, man. Uh, ahem. It was quite the scene with the detective. So they're super pale, as Mr. Faraday yelled. Salary cut for you, nitwit. Just stood there watching this unfold in front of you. Yeah, I have to say, it was really enjoyable, too. That's why when I saw Detective Gumshoe earlier, I knew to steer clear of him. <laughs> no way. I thought it was because I had something stuck on my face. <laughs> but you do! <laughs> huh? What? What have I got stuck on my face? Let's start with your eyes, nose, mouth, oh, and those ridiculous eyebrows. Huh? <laughs> oh man, messing with your head is just too much fun. So you, if you don't mind, I'd like to return to your testimony now. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh... About a week ago. But Gumshoe just started being a detective. So I guess that's all thing. Man, I think I hate you more than Von Karma. <laughs> yeah, like... Von Karma's just got an ego. She's just a high school bully. <laughs> and I find that worse. God, I hope you're the murderer. Let's see here. Found pen used by left hand. It looks like it has a quality nib. So much worse. <laughs> Plastic bags. A knife! Alright, let me look at this. Approximately 4 p.m. discovered immediately. Faraday died of a knife stab to the chest, a shock from stabbing. Gunpowder on his clothes. Okay. Let me look at this real quick. Read over it plenty. The victim is CCU. Hold it. Well, press on this, then the weak. That's a new detective salary, right off the bat like that. I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate, but isn't that a common practice? Yeah, speaking of cutting my salary, didn't you threaten to do that to me earlier, too? I suppose I did. It's only natural to cut a worthless detective's salary down to their actual worth. My father can even fire anyone new or old with a snap of his fingers. Do you think maybe that's reason enough for detectives to hate you people? Well, I guess they really shouldn't cut people's pay. Detective Bad, don't tell me Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier. This is probably the most pressing. A week ago, and you and Detective Gumshoe are acquaintances. <laughs> no way, I only met him in person today. How did you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. All your explanation perfect. <laughs> Is it not to your liking? Fortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes. Alright, if you could clear this one thing up for me. Their relationship. Actually, allow me to ask the Detective Grove directly. What was your relation to Mr. Faraday? Mr. Faraday was in charge of training rookie detectives to testify in trial. 
I met him on the very first day into the Criminal Affairs Department, pal. Oh, I had no idea Mr. Faraday was involved. Faraday. May look like an easygoing guy. But he's actually a bit of a nut for strict discipline and manners. Guys like Gumshoe tended to rub them the wrong way. There, now you know that the detective and Mr. Faraday were related. Happy now? No, wait. <laughs> you said you only had one thing to ask, right? Please allow me to ask about one more thing. <laughs> oh, you're a riot, Edgeworth. Poor baby. Tell you what, I'll let you have another go. How's that? And I save. I'm halfway down my health right now. That's not good. Lost half of your prosecutor juice. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I mean... Yeah, pretty much. Understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Fairway. However, what about his motive for kissing, killing Mr. Rell? <laughs> they almost said kissing. <laughs> it wasn't just two men, it was three. <laughs> his motive for kissing Mr. Rell, like I would know. <laughs> There's no clear motive for both of the murders. I doubt this incident would have occurred, wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have had a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Well, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? That's impossible. She must know something. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. <laughs> you didn't even do anything, and you're already laughing away. Well, anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? This time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. <laughs> perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so uptight. Is that a requisite trait for being a Bond Karma? <laughs> Else Edgeworth, I demand that you shut this rude woman up. We should both be quiet for just one second. Ahem. Oh well, I guess I just have to explain it to you kids. <laughs> it is a requirement. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. No, no, I got one. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. There's no one out there with a grudge against both men. Take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. Second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member. Two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. To someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them. No, I noticed it. <laughs> it's you, you. I'm still going to save, just in case. I'm losing prosecutor juice. Okay, I got it now. Behold! To so you, I believe there is someone you overlooked in your state. Or rather, it's because you'd rather not bring this person up. What do you mean? You're looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was a suspect in the original KG-8 incident. A member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Kochi. That's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier out in the hallway. Man who killed a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Rip. The man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Faraday. 
Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have a reason or two. You, you come it for me, pal! Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a suspect, make no mistake about that. Perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hope. But I didn't do it! <laughs> You'll stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Cochin for me. Remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this leak out. You want to investigate Cochin? You'd just be wasting your time. Why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery watching the trial, or so I was told. The cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. And the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. I suppose so. No way. Come on, Detective Bad. You gotta believe me, sir. I was really in that hallway the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay, then are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hall? I... I no, there was no one else, sir. And why should I believe you didn't do it? That one is an incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of us crime scene all by himself. This girl is a confession of guilt. I have to admit it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. But that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent. I think he would at the very least offer up a spaced out while on duty at the like. I'm sure is such a pure individual. Detective Bad! Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. And not as they say. And not as they say. Is that right, everyone? <laughs> well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? Before we do, Monsieur, there's something I'd like to speak to you about. What is it? So, what do you want to ask me about? Current case of the murdered Kadobi, Kadobian Embassy staff member. I heard that people have begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the paper. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I'd appreciate if you'd stop with the false accusation. Faceless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> Think you can stop making that ultra serious face in front of me? Uh, please stop laughing for just one second. I'm not going to make any headway. Like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG-8 incident she is. You? I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. That file is your proof? Very well, then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG-8 incident? Connection to the KG-8 incident? It's through the victim. The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> Sorry, but we're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face, and I couldn't help but... <laughs> mm -hmm. It's you? I ask that you please tell me the truth. <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. As you guess, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group my sister CCU, as I thought, and she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Cochin, but because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree, all well, because of a lack of evidence. 
No, I heard that the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cochin's trial was over. Apparently a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. Then the evidence had been tampered with. This ain't just like a criminal to do something like that. A smuggling ring being run out of a mild group by one of its secretaries. They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turns out they were in league with each other all along. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense. On this case that people are calling the second KG agent. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. I mean, you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling? I don't know what to think. Why didn't Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently, he only found out that I was a defense lawyer on this case after he'd arrived. He figured he should say, Hi, and one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop it with that scary face already. I'm fine, really. I gave him a good slap across the face. If she talks about slapping him as she laughs away is kind of creepy. <laughs> but it's just as Mr. Bad said. Not related to the double murder. I asked around and people in the galley claim he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. <laughs> Sorry. Guess that wasn't much help, huh? It's not true. Sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edgeworth, you really are too serious for your own good. We really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? For the advice, but there's no need to work. I work in my own way and will catch this criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. <laughs> Look at you with your game face, son. Ready to go. I, I'm making no such face. Did you know? Laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired making such a serious face all the time? I'm charged with making sure that all criminals in this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. Here you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. How you feel about it now? Still a bitch, but maybe a bit more of an understandable bitch. Still a bitch, though. A.G. Aitinson in this murder investigation. I believe that these two cases are related to someone. Plus, that detective. Detective Gumshoe. It's obvious he's lying, even through the lies, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly, this case is far from him. Whether or not that detective is the murderer, will only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Kahn, I swear to uphold your honorable name. My name is Miles Edgeworth. <sighs> okay. Oh, well, that's it for the day. This is a good place to end things off. Once that's saved, we do. All right, we'll go ahead and close that. And we'll go ahead and move back over here. Two and a half hours, yeah. Still not bad. I mean, three, it's not impressive. I was doing like three hour streams for a good while and then all the vacations and everything happened and I just wound up not doing it. Mostly, mostly due to a lot of things. Just being out of it, being out of practice, being out of my mood. I was in the best mood for a couple weeks. But I've been a lot better this week, and yeah, well, it's shown. But we'll have a longer stream tomorrow, at least three hours, because I want to. Uh, I want to make sure Viz can get in tomorrow. Oh, I spoiled it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're having Viz on tomorrow. <laughs> I want to make sure Viz can get on and actually stick around for a good chunk of time. But yeah. <laughs> Surprise, surprise! The only other person I know with four eyes. Actually, no, that's a lie. I also know Alex. Okay. Where are we going? Where are we dropping, boys? Do, 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 do. Hmm.
Now I think I know what we're going where we're going to do. I think I know who we're raiding. Switch it up a little today. But still go to the same place. Because on the topic of biz, we're gonna raid one of her friends. <laughs> Alright, I gotta fucking smell this properly. There we go. Bam. Uh, we're gonna raid uh, Mama Toto. She was on the Gartic phone collab we had a while ago. She's one of business friends. She's very nice. I enjoyed her company. She's shown up the stream more than a couple times. So we're gonna hit her up and we're gonna we're, we're gonna give him a good time. We're gonna give him a good time, we're gonna give him a good howdy and hello. <laughs> yeah, as for tomorrow, like I said, we'll be having an art stream. This will be there. <laughs> Didn't mean to spoil that, but I'm stupid. Maybe I do have gumshoe brain. <laughs> But, all that being said, as for next week, maybe I can get a collab going. Or maybe just have someone else on for art. I don't know, but we're having a lot of the same right now. I've said that a million times at this point, but it bears repeating until things change. So ideally, I would like to have investigations done within, like, a few-ish weeks. Because I want to be able to start playing the Paper Mario remake. Because I'm very excited for that and I really want to play that on stream. Even though I've played Paper Mario, but yeah. It, it's my childhood. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. That being said, hope y'all had a good time. Hope y'all have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever y'all are and whatever the fuck y'all are doing. And y'all have a good one.